Welcome to the CalPads Data Population Training for Student English Language Acquisition. This training aims to help CalPads users identify the required fields and appropriate codes in SILA reporting, be familiar with the general SILA reporting workflow from the Home Language Survey or HLS to LPAC testing and transmission of data from TOMS to CalPads. Perform the reporting process through online maintenance and batch upload. Determine when and how to use the ELAS correction codes. And lastly, quickly analyze and resolve submission errors with ease through the available resource documents in CalPets. Here is the agenda for this training. We will discuss the following. An overview of the SILA submission. We will also discuss the details of the business rules related to student English language acquisition. We will also explain the LPAC process in relation to CalPads reporting and also spend some time on how data is reported in CalPads. And of course, we will discuss the submission error validations that LAs will encounter and some reporting roadblock scenarios before wrapping up this session. First, we will start with some general information related to student English language acquisition, and then introduce key concepts related to the data collected. Here's a list of terms and or acronyms you will encounter throughout this training. The terms at the top section are related to the LPAC process and TOM system, while those listed at the bottom are the common terms used in CalPads reporting. Additional resources are included in the notes section of this slide, should you need more information. Let's discuss some background on why the student English language acquisition status is being reported. First, it's reported to create required state and federal reports for use in funding calculations, as well as to determine the English lear learner subgroup for state and federal accountability measures. The student English language acquisition status is submitted through the SILA file. And the status is determined either through the home language survey or the English language proficiency assessment for California testing. And the status will be used to determine if a student is proficient in English or may require English learner services. The student's SILA record is just part of a bigger set of data that represents a student profile. A student profile may comprise of four files or six depending on a student's status. So, the student is expected to have the student enrollment record submitted through the SENR file, um, the student demographic record as well as address submitted through the SINF file. And if a student is eligible or participating in any program, an SPRG record should also be submitted. And then of course, we have our SILA record to reflect the student's ELAS status. For students with disability, they should also be reported with the student special education record and the student special education services record. Both the SILA, SCNR, SINF, and SPRG files are extracted from the local school information system and uploaded to CalPads. On the other hand, the SPED and SSRV files are, comes from the local SED system, which is pushed to CalPads through the API. Users should have the following roles added to their accounts to be able to report SILA records in CalPads. First, for data population, Users should have the student search role 
to be able to search for SSIDs and demographics and determine if the student has any SILA records. Second is the SENR edit and view roles, which might be needed in modifying any enrollment records or adding enrollment records before even reporting your SILA record for the student. And the third is the SILA edit and view roles to allow you to add those records in CalPads either by batch file or by adding it manually online and the view role to be able to see the container for the student English language acquisition record. Also, if you want to review reports, the fall one reports and fall two reports role should be added to the user account. Another component for your survival in CalPAS reporting is to know where CalPAS documentation is and what are the specific documentation you might need to assist you in reporting this data. The CalPAS documentation can either be downloaded from the CalPAS system documentation page at the CDE website or from the reference section of the CalPAS user manual. First, of course, is the user manual, which you could access from the help section in CalPads, and it provides you the how-tos in reporting data. Number two is the CalPads code sets, which provides you a complete list of possible ELAS status codes, as well as EL correction codes. Third is a file specifications form, which explains in detail which fields are required and in what conditions are these fields required. Fourth is the error list, which assists you in determining all of the validation errors and also knowing what the suggested resolutions are. Fifth is the data guide, which provides you all the business requirements and rules surrounding ELAS reporting in CalPads. And last is the valid code combinations, which provides you the acceptable combinations of EL correction codes that you could report for each student. So not all schools in California are required to report a student SILA record. So here is a table that lists what school types are expected to report for students. If you see, most of it are WISE, except for ROP and ROC schools, which basically lets the home school of the student report the SILA record instead. And then, of course, if students are in district level programs and non public school programs, then the NPS schools may report it. However, the home school are expected to report it on behalf of these school types. Also, not all students in grade levels are expected to have a SILA record in CalPads. Students who are infants, toddlers, preschoolers and in adult grade level are expected to not have a SILA record in CalPads. Otherwise, if you submit a SILA record for students in this grade level, you will get a specific validation error. Here is a legend that would assist you with this matrix. Before we proceed in discussing the data population of SILA statuses in CalPads, let's first have a general overview of how to identify initial LPAC eligible students. Normally, you would get a home language survey form from the student parents. And if that home language survey form indicate that the primary language is not English or American sign, sign language, then the student 
can be marked as a TBD. However, you have to make sure that there are no prior statuses already reported for the student in CalPADS or if any of these conditions are met wherein the student only has a TBD status in CalPADS with a status date after 7-1-2018 or for this academic year 7-1-2019 and then the student has no prior CELD scores or LPAC scores either posted in CalPADS or in the student's cumulative file. If all of these conditions are met, then you can then proceed and report a TBD record if you haven't done that yet, and that will then make the student eligible for initial LPAC testing. Once you've determined the student's status in CalPADS and reported it in CalPADS, CalPADS will then export that data and send it to TOMS for TOMS to identify any eligible students for LPAC testing. There are two tests for LPAC. First is the initial testing. The second is the summative testing. The initial testing is done to determine if a student who is TBD can be an EL or IFEP student, which we will discuss later in this session. So the initial testing will then determine if a student might be EL or IFEP, while the summative testing will determine if a student who is an EL is proficient and should go on and be tagged as an RFEP. For initial testing, the requirements to be eligible for initial testing is for the enrollment record, it should be greater than or equal to 7-1-2018, and there should be a primary enrollment or short-term enrollment. And the SILA record should be a TBD with a start date equal to 7-1-2018 and a primary language that is not English or sign language. So for this academic year, the dates might change to any date after 7-1-2019 and a start date of ILA start date of 7-1-2019 or greater. For summative testing, TOMS will need to look for an EL status of a student who is enrolled this year or and the primary and should have an enrollment status of uh, primary or short term. And the SILA record should have a ELAS code, of course, of an EL with any ELAS start date. So if the student th that comes into your school already had an EL record reported in prior years, then that record will carry over and that will make the student eligible for summative testing. 